Hello boys and girls, it's Mrs. Easterman and I am going to work on our very last poster today. We have done posters on vowel teams, on our control vowels, on spelling options. This has been my, my phonics that I have been teaching you. And so today this kind of brings it all together. So let's go ahead and look at my last poster. It says up here, syllable types. Now, there are six main syllable types in the English language. And if we know them, we can read almost any word that comes along. The syllable types you have been taught throughout second grade. Um, maybe not formally, like I'm teaching you now because I am a reading specialist, but you have been taught them through your spelling words throughout the year. So there are six main types and I'll go over them. The closed syllable, these would be your short vowel words. Closed, a syllable in which a single vowel is followed by a consonant. The vowel is usually short. And this is the type of word that we start to learn in kindergarten, the CVC word. So the example they give here is cat. And I know you know how to read cat, all right? But do you understand why that A is saying ah? Look up here. The macron is the line that we put over a vowel to say it's long sound, like A. And the breathe is the little smile we put over a vowel to make it short sound, ah. And so in cat, we hear ah. Do you know why? All right, I'll tell you. Because in the closed syllable type, we have one vowel, and you're only allowed one vowel, closed in by a consonant after it. Now you can have two consonants, like cast. You can have three consonants, like catch. But you have to at least have one. So that's the rule for the closed syllable type. And in English, Closed syllable types make up the majority of our words. This one happens most of the time. All right? Over here we have an exception because in English we always have an exception. Except for the V. Ha! Huh. All right, so this word is wild. And in this word we do only have one vowel, the I. We have an LD after it. So we really should pronounce it wild if it follows our rule. But it's a, a rule breaker and we are allowed to say the long I. Wild. So if you see wild, like in child, you can say the I. Also the O-S-T, if you hear oast, like in um, most, the O-S-T can say O. Uh, the O-L-D, like in old, and gold, the O can say O. So we usually do have rule breakers, but most of the time, the closed syllable will have one vowel closed in by a consonant or two or three and will make the short vowel sound. Now I was thinking we probably should review what a syllable is. Remember, a syllable is one opening of your mouth. It's one vowel sound. So if we say cat, cat, our jaw drops one time, one syllable. And this word happens to be a one syllable word. We can have syllables that are not complete words. When we get into two syllable words or three syllable words, these right here on my poster, well, most of them, except for the father, the last one here, um, they're one syllable words. So it doesn't matter if there's really one vowel in them or two vowels in them, it's the sound, okay? Cat, 
has one syllable, the short A. And to be a closed syllable, we can only have one vowel. Going on. The next syllable type is the vowel consonant silent E. And you learn this as magic E words or silent E words. You've learned those since, gosh, the end of kindergarten. The example they give us here is cake. And you can see we have an A, a consonant, and a silent E. The E at the end does not say anything, but it has a job to do. The E at the end makes the first vowel long. So this is our first way that you kind of learned how you can make a vowel say its name. And you can see it's coded. The E has a slash through it, which means it's silent. And the A has a macron above it, which means it's long A. So now we know our closed syllable, which is our short vowel syllable. The magic E syllable type, which is a long vowel. Uh, syllable type. And look over here, I was thinking, I just did your cursive lesson for this Friday, and I was talking about how you cannot end a word in V in the English language. So you must put an E after it. Now in the word give, we're not saying give. In the word live, we're not saying live. Okay? There's a bunch of words like this that end in V. In the word have, we're not saying have. Now you know these because you have them memorized, all right? But I don't want it to confuse you. We stick that E on because we cannot end the word in V. But the E does not make the I say I. It still says give. All right, going on. We have the open syllable. Now the open syllable is just what it says. It's open. It is not closed in with a consonant. So usually they're short little words. The example they're giving you right here is the word me. And you can see that O underneath stands for open. There is one vowel in the syllable. And that vowel ends the syllable. And there is no consonant after it. And if we have that kind of word or a syllable, the vowel will get to say its long vowel sound. So this is another way of making a long vowel sound in our language. The short little words like me, go, fly, I. All right, one vowel ends the word or syllable and gets to say its name. Now, you probably learned these three syllable types before I started co-teaching in Mr. Hutchison's room. But since I've been working with you, you have definitely learned the bottom three because we did other posters about those. So let's go on to our controlled syllable. Now, we did our bossy R poster. And we did the pirate sound, R D R R. Okay, and the doggy growl sound, er, remember that? We practiced them. And you can always go back to that folder and re-watch re those videos for review. I throw a lot at you at one time in these videos, but you can go back and re-watch them. All right, our controlled syllable, or we can call it bossy R. It is when we have one vowel and an R follows it. And so here's our example. It is the word burn. You are burn er. Now you've been practicing these on the flashcards too. All these letter combinations and what they say. It all goes together. It all comes together for reading and for spelling. And it's important. All right, so we have burn. And you will notice that it's not a long vowel sound, it's not a short vowel sound, we do not use the macron or the breathe, it's just circled because the UR together is saying er. Alright, going on to the next syllable type. This is called the D syllable. Now, I think that D stands for a digraph. And we did the vowel team poster 
Vowel teams are vowel digraphs. They mean the same thing. We also had some diphthongs on there that are a type of digraph, I guess, because they're two vowels together. So just think of double vowels. Alrighty, the example we have here is boat. B-O-A-T. And again, you can see now, we could put an, a macron above that O and a line across the A because in O-A, it says O. Oh, you've been practicing that on those flashcards. So OA together is circled, and they put a D underneath for digraph, or double vowel, or diphthong, okay? So that is a type of syllable. And the last one, we did talk about this in one of the weeks. Um, it's called the consonant LE syllable type. And we have the word puzzle here. Now puzzle is a two-syllable word. Watch me. Puzzle two times my mouth drops. And what we have here is we have, remember we count from the back when we see that LE? So we go in one, two, three. And our ending syllable is ZL, Z-L-E, consonant L-E. Now, there is another type of, we call these final stable syllables. The L-E is probably the one we know best. But we can also have shun, T-I-O-N, shun. We just need to know how to pronounce that. That's a final stable syllable, and it would go with the consonant L-E. And also S-I-O-N, shun. All right? So when you see these, just remember them as a chunk. Don't try to sound them out letter by letter. Just remember T-I-O-N is shun and S-I-O-N is shun. Now, the reason knowing our syllable types is important. And like I said, you have studied these all year with your spelling words, all right? It's because, yeah, we know we can read short words. We have a lot of those memorized. But what happens when we come to something we call a multisyllabic word? Multi means many. Syllabic has to do with syllables. So let's say all of a sudden we're in third grade and we're reading some of those harder words that are much longer. And we have to chunk them. We can't sound them out letter by letter by letter. That won't work. So we need to look for our syllables in longer words. All right, so to practice that. And if you want to stop me at any time, if you want to get a paper and pencil or a dry erase board at home um, with a dry erase marker, go ahead and do that. Put me on pause. Go get your materials. I think you learn better if you do it with me. Or you can just answer at home and participate. All right. But I need you sitting up in your listening learning position. And I need you paying attention. And I need you participating in some manner at home. All right, over here, what I did is I put beginning syllables and I put ending syllables. So these are two syllable words. And some of these syllables are closed. Some of them are silent E, open syllables, are controlled syllables, uh, digraph syllables, and the consonant LE or the shun syllable type. So, I want to match them. This word is nap. And I'm going to show you. I know you know how to read nap, but let's say you didn't. I see one vowel. It's closed in by a consonant. I know it's going to be short. There is my closed syllable. This is how you can read nonsense words. Words you have never seen before, but because you understand the pattern, you can read them even though they're like Dr. Seuss words. All right, nap. Can we find an ending over here that would make a word with nap? We have shun, pet, gust, pull, zen, weed, kin, peed, er. Can you figure that out, what I should match it with? All right. 
it goes right here. Nap, kin, a napkin. Two syllable word. Nap, kin. Close syllable, close syllable. Because I have one vowel closed in by a consonant, it will be short. Napkin. Let's try the next one. What does that word say? If you said C, you're right. Do you notice it has the EA in it? Oh, right here, our D syllable type. I'm going to circle that. And I can put a macron above the E because I hear it, and I can cross out the A. That says C. What does it go with? Shun, pet, gust, pull, zen, weed. We already used kin, peed, or er. What do you think? To make a two-syllable word. If you said weed, you're right. Seaweed. Now that is also a special word because it is a compound word. Both are words on their own. So we can go weed, seaweed. Remember, compound words don't pop out any letters. Those are contractions. Okay, let me grab my red one. Here we go. Fro. Now, fro is an open syllable. Do you see how I only have one vowel and it ends the word? So I'm going to put a macron above it. Fro. Okay. Shun, pet, gust, pull, zen, peed, er. What do you think? Remember, you can pause me if you need a little more time to figure it out. All right, right here. Frozen. Frozen. And this is a closed syllable. I have one vowel closed in by a consonant. It's going to be short. So I know to say this zen, not zine. Frozen. Next word, teach. Do you know what kind of syllable that is? Can you decide out of those six? Do you see the EA? It's a vowel team. So it's right here, our D syllable type, our vowel digraphs. I'll circle it. Put a macron above the E, cross out the A. We hear E, teach. All right, what ending are we going to put on? What second syllable? Shun, pet, gust, pull, peed, or er? What do you think? If you said er, you're right. Teacher. ER is put at the end. That is our R-controlled syllable. ER. Remember our doggy growl. I'm just going to circle that. ER. And when we put ER at the end of teach, it means one who teaches is a teacher. One who bakes is a baker. Okay? All right. Let's go on to this one. Now, this one's simple. It is a word on its own. What is it? Car, good. Notice, okay, right here, our controlled syllable. The A-R, the pirate sound, R-E-R-R. -R. Car, what are we going to match it with? Carshen, carpet, cargus, carpool. Well, those are our only choices left. What do you think? If you said carpet, you're right. This is a short vowel syllable type. See the vowel? Close it in with a consonant. That's short. Pet. Carpet. Carpet has two syllables. Carpet. It has a bossy R syllable and it has a closed syllable. See how we can chunk those. All right, next one. S-T-A-M. How do you think I pronounce that? Now that's not a word on its own. It's a syllable. How do I know if that A says A or if that A says A? Do you know? It's saying A, and I'll tell you why. Because I see one vowel closed in by a consonant. That's our closed syllable. So I'm going to put that little breathe above it, and we say A, stam, stam. It's not steam. Now what are we going to match it with? Hmm, stam shun. Stan gust, stan pull, stampede. What do you think? If you said stampede, you are right. It's like when all those cattle start running together and you better get out of the way. 
and then peed. Look here. Silent E. We haven't done one of those yet. Here's our vowel consonant, silent E syllable type. Cross off the silent E, put that macron above the first E, and we have peed. And then we're going to put them together, stampede. Closed syllable type, silent E syllable type. Next one, AU. That's not a word on its own, but you know that. You know that from practicing those flashcards. AU. Did you say August AW? There you go. So this is our vowel team, our D syllable for digraph. I'm going to circle it. Okay? Now, AU together says AW. No macron there because I don't hear a long vowel or a short vowel. I'm not going to put a brief. Aw, hmm, what do we have left over here? We have shun, we have gust, we have pull. What do you think? If you said August, you are right. Notice it does get a capital A because it is a proper noun, a month of the year. Here we go, M-A. Hmm, looks like ma, but remember it's a syllable type. So, which of these over here would you say it is? If you said open, you're right. Because look, there's one vowel and it ends the syllable. So, I'm going to have that say a may. May. All right, we have two choices left. This one and this one. Which one do you think is right? If you said maple, you're right. Maple is a type of tree, or you can have maple syrup on your pancakes. Look at pull. Oh, there's our consonant L-E syllable type. The P is the consonant, and then the L-E follows it. All right? So we would underline P-L-E. Well, we only have one left. L-O. What's that going to say? If you said low, you're right. That's our open, where is it? That's our open syllable type. We have one vowel, it ends the syllable, so it gets to say its name. Low, and we have only one ending to put. And do you remember what I told you T-I-O-N says? We can't send, sound it out separately. We just have to say it as a chunk. It says shun, shun. So, when you're out in the sun, I hope you put on some lotion. And there you go. So, we just made spaghetti. <laughs> no, not really. We made two syllable words. And I hope I proved to you that all of these syllable types, if you know them, you can read them. You can read closed, closed, or Vowel team, vowel team. Oh, I didn't circle that vowel team there, did I? Okay. They're all made up of these syllable types. Now, we have one more thing to do, and this video might be getting a little long. So if you want to pause it here and come back to it, or maybe I'll even assign just this part to start with on one day, and then maybe we'll do this another day. I'm not sure. But I'm going to put it all together in one video right now. So I am going to go on. Oh, I did write these words real quick. I forgot this. I did write them as complete words, the ones we just made. So you can see number one. Read it for me. Napkin, number two. Seaweed, number three. Frozen, number four. Teacher, number five. Carpet, number six. Stampede, number seven. August, number eight. Maple, number nine. Lotion. And every single one of these words has two syllables. Your mouth would drop two times. Now, over here, I wanted to show, and I hope you can see these. Um, okay, these are three syllable words. In fact, I even threw in a four syllable word to make my point that words are made up of syllables. 
And if you know the six syllable types, you can figure out about any word that comes along. Now, I want to say something. If you already know the word, and you have that word in your long-term memory, you just say it. It's instant, it's effortless, it's accurate, it's automatic. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You have it stored in your long-term memory forever. But if you come across a word you don't know, you need a strategy to figure it out. And this is how this helps you. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to do this activity over here together. Uh, you can make cards of your own if you want, or you can just help me move these around. I have different syllables on each card, and each row we're going to unscramble the syllables to make a word. So we have three syllable words, and down here we have a four syllable word. So let's put what we learned about syllable types um, all together to do this activity and to practice, okay? And no, you're not crazy. I did zoom in a little bit over here. I wasn't sure if you could see the syllables or not. So we're going to start with the first one. We have shun. Remember, when you see shun, you just say it all together. You do not try to sound it out. We have e. And notice I did put the macron above. Remember the, a, the macron means a long vowel sound because that's an open syllable. And we have RUP, R-U-P. Again, we have one vowel closed in by a consonant, so that's going to be short. And I put the little breathe up there. So, shun e rupt. Rup. Shun e rup. I'll give you a clue. It's what a volcano does. Do you know? All right, let's put E first. That's our open syllable. It gets to say its vowel sound. We're going to put our closed syllable next, rup. And we are going to put our final stable syllable, shun. All right, so what word is that? It's a little crooked. Let's see if I can fix it. Well, that tape doesn't want to stick too well, but that's okay. What word is that? Eruption. Very good. Three syllable word. E rup shun. Your mouth drops three times. Let's try the next one. Hmm. Look at this first syllable type. N A. One vowel ends with a vowel. That is going to get to say its name because it is an open syllable. Then we have tor. T O R. That's our bossy R syllable type. And over here we have dough. Now I know that looks like do, but it's not. It is dough because it is a syllable in a word. And over here, open syllables get to say their long vowel sound. So we have nay tordo. Hmm, that's not a word I know. Can you rearrange those to figure it out? I'll give you another hint. Sometimes this comes along when we have a thunderstorm in the spring or in the summer. Tornado! There you go. So I have to rearrange my cards. Tor, bossy R. Nay, open syllable. Do, open syllable. Tornado. Okay, let's try to get that a little bit straight. Tornado. Tornado. Three syllables. Okay, how about this one? We have tay. Open syllable, so that a gets to say a. Alright, you know this word. This happens to be a word, not just a syllable, but also a word. Do you see those two O's in there? Do you remember from practicing your flashcards what two O's usually say? Do you remember? School book. They can say ooh, they can say uh. And here they are saying ooh. I'm going to circle them for you so you can see them. All right? So we have te, we have spoon, and we have bowl. This is the consonant L-E syllable type, right down here, like in puzzle. Hmm. What do you think? 
This is something you use when you cook or you bake and it measures things. What do you think? All right, if you said tablespoon, I actually gave you the tay at the beginning. Tay, bowl, spoon. Tablespoon. Use it to measure ingredients. Now, boys and girls, that is three syllables. Tay, bowl, spoon. But it happens to be a compound word, table and spoon. Table, spoon, tablespoon. Let's look at the next one. Bossier, bossier, short vowel, closed. What does G-E-R say? Grr. What does B-U-R say? Burr. Remember, doggy growl, burr. And then H-A-M says ham, and that happens to be a word too, all right? That's a closed syllable type. Hmm, what do you think? It's not a ger burr ham. That's kind of weird. We cooked these out last night. You have them at picnics. Hamburger, awesome. So I'm gonna switch, that burr gets to stay in the middle. I'm going to put ham, and then burr, and then gur. Three syllables, hamburger. You can clap them too, you can do them on your arm. Hamburger, hamburger. Again, kind of a compound word. We have ham, we have burger, hamburger. Alrighty, oh, how about here? This is what you're doing from Northwood this year, alright? First syllable, that is a word on its own, but it is also a syllable in this word. Um, eight, here's silent E. Okay, cross off the E, put the make crown above the A. That is our silent E syllable type. And then we have, what do you think that is? Do you see that breathe there? All right, there is the little breathe, short A, because it's a closed syllable type. Grad. And this one is just a vowel all by itself. And when we have that, that's the open syllable. There's no consonant closing it in. So it can say you. Eight grad you. Hmm. You're going to be doing this from Northwood. You're going to be going on to Greentown and having a fantastic year, a great transition. What do you think? All right. If you said graduate, you're right. Grad. You eight. All right, let's read it now. Graduate and congratulations. We're going to do another one here. All right, we're starting with un, the first syllable here, un. Notice I do have a breve above it. I'll do it in red so you can see it. Means a short vowel because it's a closed syllable, one vowel closed in by a consonant. Oh, look at our next syllable type. We have a vowel team in there. That's our vowel team syllable type right here, our D for digraph. What does that syllable say? All right, neath, neath. We hear the E and the A is silent. And then our last syllable over here is bossy R again. There's that ER going er. Unneath der. Rearrange them. Figure it out. Okay, if you said underneath, good job. Underneath. I found the egg underneath the bush. Here we go. Underneath. Now, the last one down here, I'm just showing you, it has four syllables in it. it has a lot of letters in it, but we can figure it out. So let's look from the beginning. We have may. Now that a is going to say a because it's not closed in by a consonant. It's an open syllable. May. Remember I told you when you see t-i-o-n, you're just going to say shun. We're not going to sound it out. It just says shun. It's called a final stable syllable and it belongs here with this last one. All right, this word, you know it. That's a word on its own. It's bossy r. Four. And the last one, you know that word too. That's in, all right? 
That syllable is in. And there's the brief to make it short, short I. Mation for in. Hmm. What do you think? Can you figure it out? If you said information, good job. So I have a lot to move around here. All right. Let's see. I have to move them all. Oh my goodness. That's at the end. This is at the beginning. In for May Shun. Boys and girls, I'm just trying to show you that we have a strategy for figuring out longer words. Um, again, if you have them memorized, you just say them. You don't have to fool around with any of this. And some of you have quite a big, quite a big um, sight word memory. We call that our orthographic lexicon if you want to really impress somebody. All right. But some of us still don't know some words. And I want to tell you, I don't know some words. I love to read. I read all the time, but I still come across words I don't know. And so I use my phonics strategies to help me figure them out. And so chunking those words I don't know into syllables and then putting them together, well, boy, that helps me become a better reader, a better writer, a better speller. And if I'm not too old for this, you're not too old for this. Okay. So that last one is information. That's a four-syllable word. Congratulations. I have them on here. I know the light sometimes bounces off of this, so I'm going to try to put it, and hopefully it's not too shiny for you to read. But So our first word, what is that? Read it. Eruption. Our second word. Tornado. Our third word. Tablespoon. Fourth word. Hamburger. Fifth word. Graduate. Sixth word. Underneath. And last word. Information. Look at those big words. But we can pull them apart, we can chunk them, and we can sound them out if we don't know them. So as I said before, this is our final poster, the syllable types. I'm putting this out to you and you're going to be doing some work with it this week. You're going to be playing some games. I think I said this before. Might be doing some worksheets. So if you need to come back and review this information, it will be there for you. So if it's too much at once, just watch a little bit at a time or go back and review it. You know, reading really is kind of like rocket science. There's a lot to it. But you can do it. Thank you for participating, for doing your best. I'm so proud of all of you. I wish I would have had the opportunity to work with you in the classroom a few more days, but this has worked out just fine too. All right? Thank you so much. Bye.